our Chinese-speaking friends, Ni Hao. Ni Hao. To our friends from the Philippines, Magadan to Magapo. And to everybody, welcome. No matter who you are, or where you're from, or where you happen to be at this very moment, we are so glad to have you uh, be part of the community of First Baptist Church. And if you're a visitor with us, um, if you're in the building, there are cards and a few racks in front of you where you can jot down information um, and put it in the office link later in the service. If you're joining us on Facebook, if you would leave us a comment so that we know that you're here. Um, and if you want more information about First Baptist, uh, you can email us at welcome at fbcburlington.com. Today we are uh, pleased and privileged to have Carl Fandridge as our guest organist today. So thank you, Carl, for being here. <clears throat> and uh, let us now continue in a spirit of worship by singing our intro, which is printed in the bulletin.
I now invite the children to come forward to the front pew for children's time. Hi, folks. How are you? Why is there a camera up there? Because there are folks at home who are joining us from worship for worship. And so if some some people are sick, some people we actually have a person, a woman from Florida who joins us in worship every single Sunday on Facebook. Hello, Gloria. And so that's what the camera is about. But I had a question. I've been thinking about names today. And how do people get names? Sarah? Well, how did you get your name? <laughs> well, our, we get our names usually from our parents, right? And they have a reason for why they pick the name. You might be named after somebody. It might be you, uh, somebody in your family, or you might be named after a person in the Bible, or you might be named after um, a famous person. Sometimes we're named after qualities that our parents hope for us. Sometimes we're named... Um, there's another way of being named. We might just be named, our, our parents might just like the sound of the name that they give us. And they think it's a cool name that will help us move forward in life. So you all in your Sunday school classes have started learning about Moses, correct? Last week. And today you're going to continue with that, learning about Moses. And in today's story, Moses asks God what God's name is. Well, we think God's name is God, right? Yes. And that is one of God's names. But that's not what God says. God, When Moses asked God what God's name is, God says, my name is I am who I am. Huh? I know it. What do you think that means? I'm not spoiling the story. There's more to it. But I'm giving you a, I'm giving you a little head start into thinking about what the name I am what I am means. Sometimes it says, um, I will be what I will be. Or I will be gracious to those who I will be gracious. Sarah, what do you think? That's a good, God wants us to always be who we are. Yep, that's a good way to think about it. It also could mean that God is present. I'm here. I am. And anything that you can think about God, God is bigger than that, right? So I want, I encourage you or I invite you to think about your own name and what it means and how it helps you move through the world. And also just kind of ponder about what does it mean that God is named I am who I am I, or I am what I am. Okay. Is that a good thing to ponder? All right. Let us pray. Most gracious God, we thank you for sharing your name with us. And we thank you for our names, which help us move through the world. Be with us as, I, as we ponder you and your great love for um, Moses and the people in the scripture stories and your great love for us. Help us to share that love with the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you can go to your classes.
I invite you to put your two feet on the floor and your shoulders back and just rest in the presence of God. We can breathe in God and breathe out peace. Breathe in God and breathe out peace. Our prayer today will have moments of silence where you can lift up your own prayers. And when I say God of the journey, you're invited to say we lift our prayers to you. Gracious God, we thank you for this cloudy autumn day. In the midst of our busyness and our worries and our distractions, we thank you for the opportunity to step away from all of that, to rest in your presence and your care. We pray for your spirit to empower us and bless us. We thank you for all that we are. We thank you for the opportunities to serve you. Thank you for our families, our friends, our work, and our church community. Hear us as we lift up our prayers of praise and thanksgiving. God of the journey. We lift our prayers to you. Compassionate God, we pray for ourselves and for others. We pray for those dealing with illness, hard circumstances, and grief. We, we pray for Natalie and Bob and Muko and Marjorie and Shirley and Wyatt and Andy and Marty and Rebecca and for all of those on our hearts. We pray, Lord, for the people of Palestine and Israel. The anger and grief in these communities is beyond words. Empower the peacemakers and lead the vengeful to lay down their weapons. Somehow lead them to find peace together eventually, <laughs> but today help them to find a way to let all the trucks in to Gaza. Lord, we pray for our government, especially for the House of Representatives. May those who seek to govern responsibly with reason and compromise be empowered. We pray for the community of Burlington, and especially for those who are unhoused and living on the streets. We pray for the folks who set up tents in our front lawn last night and are still there today. We pray for those battling addiction and despair. And we pray for all those who are working to, sol to help solve these desperate circumstances. We pray for our sister churches, New Alpha Missionary Baptist Church, which had a wonderful revival here this week. And we pray for Iglesia Bautista Onidos and Amor de Mayagues. We pray for the people of Afghanistan and for the people of Burma and Ukraine. We pray for peace and safety and justice for all peoples around the world. Hear us as we lift up our prayers of supplication. God of the journey, we lift our prayers to you. Merciful God, we place our trust in tangible things, things we can see and touch. And we question sometimes whether you are really here with us. Forgive us, Holy One, when we fail to recognize that you are always nearby, patiently waiting for us to recognize your presence and your glory. Help us when we lose our way and forgive us when we forget to whom we truly belong. Lover of justice, open our eyes to see you, open our ears to hear you, 
open our hearts to love you and open our hands to serve you. Hear us now as we lift up our prayers of confession. God of the journey, we lift our prayers to you. O Lord, we lift up all these prayers to you, knowing that you hear them. Hear us now as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. During the month of October, we received the World Mission Offering, which supports American Baptist global servants around the world. Today, we have um, a video from one of the global servants um, serving in South Africa. My name is Faye Arbro. I'm in King Williamstown, South Africa. King Williamstown's name is Bonkwe in the Gosa language. Uh, and I'm here to help special needs children. I've been in King Williamstown since February, 2021. God called me to the mission field in 2013. I was on a women's ministry retreat. And at that moment, I know God was calling me to a global ministry. The primary ministry partner here is Telios Christian School, which is a ministry of Bethany Emmanuel Baptist Church. I just love IAN's missiology that we come alongside our partners and they help me to grow. Every day I want to get up and to come and serve God at Telios Christian School. It is so good. It is so good. It's two miles from, from my home to, to the school and I get there by car because I have a lot of things that I take. My school day starts at about eight o'clock in the morning, and then it goes on all the way to about four o'clock in the afternoon. The reason that most parents send their children to Tilios is the class size. There is no school in this area that has a one to 13 teacher to child ratio. Telios is not uh, a special needs school, but because of the ratio, we do get special needs children. When you make a gift to the World Mission Offering, you're making a gift to Telios Christian School. When the World Mission Offering helps a child at Telios, they're helping generations to make changes that would never be able to happen. or to the, well, to contribute to the World Mission Offering or to the special One Great Hour of Sharing um, offering for Middle East Peace or for uh, the General Ministries of First Baptist. You can give electronically through our website or you can, um, folks in the building can use the white pew envelopes. However you participate uh, with us through your presence, through your prayers, through your financial gifts, all of it. 
is deeply, deeply appreciated. Our many offerings will now be received.
Our scripture text this morning comes from the book of Exodus, chapter 33, verses 12 through 23. Moses is talking to the God, to God. Moses said to the Lord, see, you have said to me, bring up this people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name, and you have also found favor in my sight. Now, if I have found favor in your sight, show me your ways so that I may know you and find favor in your sight. Consider, too, that this nation is your people. God said, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. And Moses said to God, if your presence will not go, do not carry us up from here. For how shall it be known that I have found favor in your sight, I and your people, unless you go with us? In this way, we shall be distinct, I and your people, from every people on the face of the earth. The Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing that you have asked. For you have found favor in my sight, and I know you by name. Moses said, show me your glory, I pray. And God said, I will make my goodness pass before you and will proclaim before you the name, the Lord. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. But God said, you cannot see my face for no one shall see me and live. And the Lord continued. See, there is a place by me where you shall stand on the rock. And while my glory passes by, I will put you in a cleft of the rock. And I will cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will take away my hand and you shall see my back. But my face shall not be seen. Will you join with me in a spirit of prayer? <clears throat> May the words of my mouth and the, pre and, the, and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. When I worked as a hospital chaplain, my supervisor would often remind us, all of us, that structure binds anxiety. <clears throat> the more worried or anxious someone is, the more they want structures and answers and control. And certainly with the tragedy that continues to unfold in the Middle East and in the chaos of the House of Representatives, we yearn for structure, answers, and control. In today's scripture, Moses is asking God for a lot of structure, answers, and control because he and the Israelites are very worried and very anxious. In the aftermath of the golden calf incident that we explored last week, Moses and the people have a, are having a hard time believing that they deserve or will receive God's continuing care. They are unsure about their future. And, la and like last week's story, today's text touches us very personally and evocatively because it, it speaks to the fears that we all have at one time or another. And it provides yet another window into the nature of God. 
our God can be trusted to know us and care for us. And he is sipping the tea. God can be trusted to know us and even in knowing us, still care for us. <clears throat> Wouldn't it be great to see God with a neon sign and a big bag of donuts, as I said a couple of weeks ago? To have all of our questions answered once and for all? This is what Moses wants. Last week, when last we saw Moses, he was angry at the people's betrayal of God and their betrayal of him. The golden calf debacle had seriously damaged the relationship between God and the people and between Moses and his brother Aaron. After bringing his own punishment upon the people, Moses again spoke to God, asking for forgiveness for them, saying, alas, this people has sinned a great sin, making for themselves gods of gold. But please forgive them. If not, blot me out of the book you have written. Moses is ready to say, if you can't forgive them, then just don't even think about me anymore either. But God does forgive them. But although God has forgiven them, things have changed. Before the golden calf, God's presence traveled with the people in a pillar of fire and cloud. And God spoke directly to the people from Mount Sinai. Now, God tells Moses that an angel is going to accompany them to the promised land, not the full presence of God. God says, I will not go up among you or I would consume you on the way for you are a stiff necked people. Now, this really worries the people. And Moses tells them to take off their ornaments as a sign of their true repentance, which they do. And things do get a bit better for God is still speaking with Moses, talking with him in the tent of meeting face to face as one speaks to a friend is what this is what the text says. So despite God's anger and disappointment, God does not break the covenant or abandon the people. God's full presence remains with Moses, even though God remains at a distance from the rest of the group. And it's during one of these private conversations between God and Moses that this conversation of today's text occurs. And I don't know if it, come, if, if it is obvious to me. It was obvious to me that in this text, Moses is really agitated. And he actually sounds rather snippy with God. It's not being snippy with God might feel good at the moment. It doesn't help anything. Moses says to God, look, you told me to lead these people, but you haven't told me who's going to help me do it other than the angel and your presence and Aaron, who's not much help and young Joshua. You say, you know me by name and I found favor in your sight. But if that's true, why don't you show me who you are so that I may know you? If you know me, it's only fair that I know you in the same way. In verses 12 and 13, Moses uses the word to know three times. And the Hebrew word for know is yada, like yada, yada, yada. And he finishes by saying, remember that this disobedient lot is the people that you chose for me to lead. Implying that he's really not to blame. Moses is not to blame for how they turned out. Even though Moses is borderline rude to God, God responds to the question of who's going to help by saying, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. You would think that this amazing and grace-filled statement would appease Moses, but no. 
In fact, Moses either doesn't hear it or doesn't believe it. Because right after God says, my presence will go with you, Moses says, well, if your presence won't go with us, there's no point in us taking another step forward. It's only your presence with us that makes us a people unique in all the world. And so we have no chance of survival without your full participation. We need you, all of you, not just an angel. And amazingly, God agrees, changing the plan. Okay, I will do the very thing you asked. For you have found favor in my sight, and I know you by name. God knows Moses and the people by name. God knows what they need and will provide it. That's great, yes? But Moses is still anxious. He wants more structure, more answers, more control. And he says to God, show me your glory, I pray. He's asking to see all of God, to know God fully as God fully knows him. This is a deep human impulse going all the way back to the Genesis story of Adam and Eve in the garden, eating of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. It, it's the hesitance to trust something that we do not fully understand. To this audacious request, God responds by offering to show goodness and to proclaim the holy name, I am who I am, and to show grace and mercy, but not the full extent of God's glory. Moses will not be permitted to see God's face. Moses may not see and know God completely. For no one shall see me and live, God says. God understands this human impulse, but will not indulge it. It is beyond human capacity to know all of God. So God says to Moses, here's what we'll do. You stand right here by me, nestled safely in the cleft of this rock. And I will cover you with my hand as I pass by. And once I'm past, you may look and see my back, but my face shall not be seen. Let's stop and think about that for a moment, about God's hand sheltering and protecting Moses. Even though Moses has been snippy and presumptuous. This action reveals God's nature in a deep, visceral way. God holds Moses and keeps him safe. And let's also think about that, how seeing God's back permits Moses to see where God is going and to see what God sees. It aligns Moses' vision with God's vision. It doesn't allow Moses to control God's nature or dictate God's movements. Moses has to let go of his anxiety. And he has to trust that God's presence will remain with him. But he is now aligned with God's vision and purpose. This story speaks to us because we too struggle with anxiety and worry. We too want structures and answers and control. And we too worry that we don't deserve God's care, that somehow we must earn it, and that our well being depends only on ourselves. We want God to prove God's self to us beyond a shadow of a doubt. No more questions, only answers. And in this way, we don't admit this, but in this way, we might be in control of God. But that is not how God works. God is beyond us, beyond our limits, beyond our understanding. 
but we can understand God's nature, which is goodness and grace and mercy. And we can align our vision with God's vision. The Catholic theologian Thomas Merton writes, how shall we begin to know you, know who you are, if we do not begin ourselves to be something of what you are? We receive enlightenment only in proportion as we give ourselves more and more completely to God by humble submission and love. We do not first see and then act. We act and then see. And that is why the person who waits to see clearly before he will believe never starts on the journey. So how do we move forward? How do we leave worry behind us? First and foremost, we trust God. We hold deep in our hearts and our minds and our spirits the fact that God knows us by name and loves us unconditionally. And let's re repeat that. We hold deep in our hearts and our minds and our spirits the fact that God knows us by name and loves us unconditionally. Remember, it was the people's fear and mistrust of God that led to the whole golden calf debacle. Since God stayed with the people after that, we can be reassured that God will stay with us despite our own failings. God knows us better than we know ourselves. And God knows what we need and will provide for us. Secondly, we align our vision with God's vision. Just imagine for a moment, God brushing your shoulder in passing, and then you turning to follow God wherever God will lead you. God gives us guidance. God calls us to follow. And as we do, we grow in our relationship with God and with others. Sometimes we are led to try new things. Sometimes we make mistakes, but we're never just on our own. Yesterday, 20 of us gathered to discern our ministry priorities for next year and three years in the future. It was a wonderful afternoon of important conversations and hopeful envisioning. We discerned three priorities. Congregational fellowship, faith formation for all ages, and meeting basic needs of folks within our community and the folks outside of our church. And we talked about concrete ways of implementing these priorities. And some of these projects will be great successes and some might not come to pass, but all of them are part of our journey being aligned with God. Our God is with us in ways beyond our understanding. Let us be at peace, content to be known by the creator of the universe. And may we follow God's leading today and every day. Let us pray. Oh God, you are beyond the limits of our comprehension and yet closer to us than our very breath. Help us to trust in you. Empower us to act in accordance with your will. Inspire us to new ways of sharing your goodness with the world. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. The All Church Retreat uh, yesterday was great, and I thank everybody who participated in it. And as I said, we came up with three priorities and um, some concrete ways to live those out in the next year and in the next three years. Um, and we'll be sharing the details of that um, as we go forward. Today, after worship, the mission team will be meeting in Fellowship Hall to discuss a partnership with the First United Methodist Church um, uh, about 
feeding folks on Sunday evenings. And everybody's invited to come if you're interested um, in this uh, project. The meeting will also be on Zoom and we'll use the Thursday, uh, Thursday morning coffee hour uh, link. The Green Steeple Weekly on Thursday, for some reason, did not, well, it didn't get out to you all because for some reason it had, it was too big. We're not sure why. So I apologize for that. But the link is on, la the link, the coffee hour link is in last week's um, Green Steeple Weekly also. The fall book group will be meeting tomorrow night at 7 p.m. on Zoom. We're reading Dancing in the Darkness, Spiritual Lessons for Thriving in Turbulent Times by Otis Moss III. And uh, tomorrow we will be discussing the introduction um, and up through chapter two. I think there's a forward to, so all of that. Um, and I'll email the Zoom link tomorrow morning. We have a couple of um, exciting things coming up um, next Sunday, October 29th at 3 p.m. The uh, DOP organ recital will be here. Um, David Nyweem will be playing and it's going to be great. So invite your friends and neighbors to come. November 4th, Saturday, November 4th, we will have our cleanup day um, to spiff up the churchyard to get re get it ready for winter from 9 a.m. until noon or when everybody's done. And uh, many hands make light work and uh, it's more fun to have more folks around too. So uh, please consider joining us uh, November 4th. And then on November 5th, it will be All Saints Sunday when we remember and honor those in our community who have died since last All Saints Day and lift up our prayers for all of our loved ones who have died. So this is always a very meaningful service where we light candles for folks. Um, and so I encourage you to, to come um, and uh, invite friends who might who might appreciate it. Our Bible study meets on Mondays um, at 1130 in Fellowship Hall and um, and on Zoom. We watch Chosen at two o'clock in the sanctuary uh, on Mondays and coffee hour is Thursdays at 930 on Zoom. This past week, uh, New Alpha Missionary Baptist Church had uh, three uh, evening three day revival um, services here. And uh, Deacon Jarvis from New Alpha sent me this note that I wanted to share with you all. Good morning, Karen. Words cannot express how grateful we at New Alpha are for the love and support we received from First Baptist Church during our revival services. Please share our gratitude to your staff and members in Jesus name, Jarvis. So I was at the service on Tuesday and it was really nice to worship uh, with our sister congregation. So I wanted to share that with you. The other piece of information I want to share with you is that um, our region is during is in an interim time, and we are searching for a new um, executive minister. Next Sunday, our second hour time will be an opportunity to discuss um, a survey that the search committee has given us, and it's got a bunch of questions of what we want to, what we are looking for in our next executive minister. The other thing that's happened is that our one of our sister churches, Lincoln Church, has has called a new pastor. Um, the Reverend Corrales Bryant, and the region has declined to recognize him um, because of the Lincoln's um, declaration of inclusion and his affirmation of that declaration of inclusion. And um, so this is troubling to us. And, and um, the committee, a person in the committee also suggested that Lincoln find a new region to be part of. And that is sad to me <laughs> and heartbreaking um, as uh, Lincoln has been part of our association regions since the 1800s. So I, I anticipate that our discussion next Sunday um, about region stuff um, might include conversations about that reality also. Are there other um, questions, not questions, other announcements that folks have for today? Let us sing our closing hymn, which is number 496, Leaning on the Everlasting. <laughs>
understanding will go with us everywhere, now and forever. Amen.